that they were coming out in chunks. Yeah. You could hear it. It's like people throwing sheetrock off the yeah. roof. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, bah, 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 bah. And your asshole is distended. Three, three times I went in there, and it was like 10 minutes of bah, yeah. bah, like flushing. I had to get up and fucking get the pogo stick and push it down. <laughs> Whatever the fuck you call that thing. Loading a cannon. I yeah. had a fucking, I got the big extended one for gorillas. Yeah. The ones they use at the gorilla cage in the Bronx Zoo. I'm pushing down on this motherfucker. But for some reason, I attract, I attract these flies, and they go against the bathroom window, and they kind of get retarded. Yeah. Right. So after a few days, they just come into my lair, and I got a little weed container. <laughs> a glass container that's empty weed, and yeah. I put them in there. I t take one of their wings off to fuck them up a little bit, and I put little holes and I feed them weed. I just give them weed, and for three or four days they're just eating weed. They don't know, <laughs> and I just put more flies in there. I got about eight of them in there right now, and they're oh fucking. Do you let them out? No, no, they're in there. I'm like, that's Hanna it. I'm like that dude in Hannibal Lecter that collected the bugs and put them up chubby chicks pussies. Yeah, and then he would drop them <laughs> off in the weeds off the 170. <laughs> What's remember the put the cream on the skin? That dude, the yeah. creepy dude. Dropped yeah. a dropped a lotion in the yeah. bucket. Dropped a lotion in the bucket. I don't remember bugs going in the pussy in that movie. Is that no, there was a moth. Remember? There was a moth. Oh god, I don't I don't remember that. He would part. put moths in their mouths or something. Oh yeah. That's how they found them. They right. found the moth in the mouth and right. they they figured out that the moth got sent from some other country and Yeah. They no, I used to take those Viking in. I got a I got shoulder surgery. This is probably going back five years. I got shoulder surgery just from repeated throwing shit my entire life. Just the right the right shoulder needed to be rebuilt. And they gave me, I had the surgeon write me Vicodin. I had the general practitioner write me hydrocodone. I had uh, somebody in physical therapy write me somebody. I, I was filling every, everyone for fucking nine months. These guys kept refilling it. And then I'd go into people's medicine cabinets. If I came to your house for dinner, I'd excuse myself to go to the bathroom and I would rifle through your shit and I would take your hydrocodone. If there's anybody out there, friends, family, that have had me over in the last five years and you think you got a little hydrocodone left for when you get a, a backache, you're going to have to refill that. That's gone. Thank you for the honesty. Yeah. That's why I don't put my shit in the bathroom. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I'd go to open houses. I got my medication in the weirdest places. Yeah. Like my blood pressure medication <laughs> in the kitchen next to the refrigerator, so I'm reminded to take it. Yeah. And all my meta 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 little do pills. Or an I got hidden. them hidden. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Those are hidden because I don't want Mercy to find them. I know you got to get a safe. And I don't. First of all, I don't have them to put up in my. Like some people take them and they put them in their medicine cabinet. Yeah. I don't have the anxiety shit the doctor gives me. Yeah. I don't put it in there. I don't even take it on the road. I wash more of those anxiety pills that I oh, take. Oh, you tell me. You put them in your pocket before I you come to the store. I wash more than I take. Yeah. You know, so. But it was interesting. Before the podcast started, we were talking about the Friars Club. Oh, right, What right. are the requirements? Well, back in the day, the requirements were that you had to be a man. I don't know what the, I don't think there was ever a race rest restriction. There's a lot of private clubs in New York that had race restrictions. You know, you had the uh, the union club and the players club. There was a whole, like, circuit of private Clubs are mostly in like old, beautiful brownstones, like five story brownstones. And the Friars Club was founded as a club for entertainers. It was for comedians, Borscht Belt guys that were on the road, uh, Broadway actors, songwriters, entertainment attorneys, agents. And they, they all joined this club and they would just hang out. And they had a uh, the Joey Lewis bar. You came in on the left and it was one of these old time New York bars with the fucking red padded rubber on the edge of the bar and then some deep black booths in the back and they serve you the fucking peanuts that everybody's pissy hands have been rifling through all day but you eat them anyway and guys just come in there after work have a couple of drinks and then during the day guys would come in for lunch the dining room was fucking beautiful i think it was the frank sinatra dining room and you get the dover sole and they they take the bones out right at the table they come over and they fillet it for you right at the table and you just put it on your account. Nobody, You don't bring money to the Friars Club. Everything is just, they know your number. They throw it down. Then you go upstairs, and they got a, a, a card room. Guys play cards all day, betting, all fucking like, these. you know, they're working at night. They're comics. 
So they have their lunch, they play cards, and then upstairs they get a steam room that's the best steam room in the city. And you walk in, you get your little locker, and then they give you a robe, and you walk into the steam room. Guy comes in, he's got a towel, and then he's got a washcloth that they, they, uh, that's got ice cubes on it, and he hands you that, the glass of water. And then uh, when you get out, you walk into the shower, you take a shower, big fucking, big shower with the, the power nozzle that blows that shit out. It's like a civil rights riot in the 60s. You're getting blasted against the wall. German shepherds are barking underneath the, the stall. And then you come out, and this Polish guy takes a towel, not making this up, and he fucking pats you dry, your whole body. You just stand there with your arms out. This guy pats you dry, everything but your dick. And then he wraps a towel around your waist, hands you another glass of water, and then you go back and you go sit and you put the robe on, and they got these uh, these lazy boys sitting outside by the gym, big screen TV, Variety magazine, Hollywood Reporter, and you sit down and you fucking watch a little MSNBC, read Variety, put a towel on your head, take a nap, and then you go out to your show that night. Do you have to let the guy draw you off? Seems Why wouldn't you? I don't know. That seems a great feeling. How, how long have you been a member of this for? I joined in 93. And what are the requirements? I mean, you got to have uh, somebody recommend you and second you, and then they review you, and then you come in, and <clears throat> they have a little ceremony where they swear you in and read you the rules and all that stuff. So I joined. My father was a friar my whole life. I watched I watched the OJ chase at the Friars Club. I watched, you know, the 86 Mets win the World Series in that Friars Club. They had a they have a TV viewing room that's fantastic. You know, and the waiters are everywhere and fucking black jackets and bow ties getting you drinks. And uh and then my I sponsored this woman Sarah Firon. Funny comedic actress, kind of quirky. And I uh, I submitted her. She got accepted. She goes to the ceremony. And she brings her friend, Aaron. And I'm there, and I talk to Aaron. She's with a guy, but I talked to her for like 20 minutes. And then after the ceremony, I said to Sarah Firon, I said, I'm going to marry your friend someday. And uh, three years later, I started dating Aaron, took her to the Friars Club, proposed in the Mer- Milton Burrow room. I proposed to her. She said yes. The rest is history. It's a beautiful story. Yeah. Now, can I ask you a question? Yeah. You're a pretty smart guy. We love each other. <laughs> we really do. We I know really what you can say right now. Why the fuck don't I want to go there? We're going in like fucking Marines. You understand me? Welcome to church, motherfucker.